Hi, my name is Tyler, and in this video, I'm going to give you a quick walkthrough uh, of what you need to do to get set up to program R in the Emacs text editor. The prerequisites here are really just that you have to have R and Emacs installed, and then what we're going to do is add a package called ESS that will allow Emacs to interact directly with the R program. So in order to do that, we're going to add a little bit of custom code or configuration code to our Emacs, uh, what we call our .emacs or, or init file. You'll probably find that file in your home directory in a subdirectory named .emacs.d, and the file itself is called init.el. If you've been using Emacs for, for any amount of time, you've probably already added some code here. But if you're just getting started, it's possible the directory and maybe even that file won't exist yet. And if that's the case, you'll need to create them before you add the the code. The code itself, these three lines, uh, you don't really need to understand the details. Basically, we're just adding the Melpa package archive to the sources that Emacs will look for when we ask it to install additional packages. And uh, Melpa is a really popular place to go to find third-party contributed packages, of which ESS is the, the one that we're interested in today. So once you've done that, you've added that to your configuration file, you save the file, the easiest way to get it to take effect is just to, to shut Emacs and, and reload, uh, restart the program. Once you've restarted the program, you'll be able to find the, the package list by going up to the Options menu and coming down to the Manage Emacs Packages uh, option. Click on that, and we will see uh, all of the list of, of packages that are available. If you want to add a package, you just put the uh, I Key, and that will list things for installation. Uh, and then when you press the X key, it will go through the process of installing. We don't want all of those things. Um, we really just need the one, the ESS. So to find ESS, because there's, there's you can't see from here, but there's, there's thousands of packages listed here, I'm going to do a quick search to find the ESS package. Uh, if I just look for ESS, so I'm going to do Control S, sorry, it's the search shortcut for Emacs. And if I just do ESS, uh, immediately we run into a problem in that those three letters show up together all the time and we just want the particular one where that's the start of the word. So I can do that by cancelling. I'm going to control G to cancel and then start again control S but I'm going to start with a space then ESS and now I find ESS on a line all on its own. And that's the one I want. Now in my case you can see over here it's already installed so I can't install it again. Uh, but if you haven't installed it yet, at this point you would press the I key and then press the X key and you'll have to wait for, depending on network connections, maybe 30 seconds or a minute for it to download all the, the bits and pieces that make up ESS. In my case, it's already on my computer, so I'm just going to press the Q button to quit out of that. And so at this point, uh, you're ready to go. You've got ESS installed and you've got R installed and that means that from within Emacs you can start R. So the way we're going to do that is uh, by using the mx command, or execute extended command, I think is the, the fancy word for it. Um, that means I'm going to press the alt key down and, and then the x. And you see down at the bottom, I get the, the, uh, the mx symbol showing that it's waiting for an extended command. And this extended command is quite short. It's just the letter r. And now we see that down in that bottom line, the mode line, Emacs is asking me where do I want to start from, and in this case the current directory will be just fine. But if you want to change that, you can you can uh, go up and down your your directory tree to, to find the location you want. I'm just going to press Enter, and you can see now I've got a Emacs terminal all set up. I'm waiting for my uh, commands to be entered, so I can do um, anything you normally do in R. I can just enter commands. Uh, commands like normal. So that's uh, not super exciting, but it should be familiar. That's the main thing I'm trying to, to convey in this in this uh, video, is that uh, most of the basics are going to be the, the same when you're using R in any of the different environments that you could be using. Lots of features that we'll get to in the, in the follow-up, but uh, for now, we're basically just uh, just getting started here. And so I can go up and down with arrow keys, up keys, um, page up, page down. Um, 
there's other ways to to scroll through your uh, your history, and if you want to actually, one of the best ways to discover some of those those common uh, features that you might want is to go up to the menu here to IESS, and then we can see um, different uh, different options here for for things that you can do. One of the things that's not listed up here is how we search back and forth through the history, which I find quite uh, handy. I can do, uh, and that's just holding the Alt key down and pressing P for previous and N for next. And you can see I just scroll up and down through my history and then I can modify or re-enter commands, any of those sorts of things. Um, yeah, and really there's, there's a fair bit more, but I'm not gonna touch on it from here. I uh, just want to show you that you've got a terminal now and you can you can use it as any normal R terminal. But most of the time, once you're doing serious work, serious analysis or repeatable uh, research, you're gonna want to be using uh, our script files. So I can load those either by the file function or in Emacs uh, because you open files so frequently. There's a shortcut for that, which is control X, control F. And I want the ESS install, oops. So there's my script file. And this is, uh, you know, regular R code. You can see it's got some some syntax highlighting to make it easier to see the, the assignments and the function names and, and uh, those sorts of things. Uh, there's a bunch of features available to you here. You can find some of them from ESS. Um, the ones in the top are probably the, the most commonly used ones. Uh, you can load the whole file. You can send the whole thing to Emacs by clicking on uh, that one line. Um, now notice also though over on the right hand, you get the keyboard shortcuts. So I can load the file by clicking on that menu item, or I can do control C, control L. Uh, likewise, all of these things, enter region or line, uh, control N, control return. Uh, so for example, if I want to send this line to Emacs, control and the enter key, and it sends that line down to Emacs, or down to the interpreter. And so I can just step through my file line at a time, sending uh, one, or one bit of code after the other. Uh, all kinds of different things that you can get to there, but you can do a fair bit with just those basic, just those basic commands. And I think probably for my first six months or a year, that's about all I, when I was using Emacs and ESS when I was getting started, um, I really didn't use any of the more extended features for quite a while, because this is enough to, to, do, uh, to do all kinds of, of useful work. And that's, um, that's all you need to get off the ground. Uh, the sky is the limit. There's all kinds of customizations and uh, other features and options available. Uh, I've got a, a few more details in the written version of this tutorial if you want to look at, at some pointers on, on some of the basics. And then we'll have uh, some additional tutorials will be posted alongside this one with some of the more advanced features or interesting uh, additional packages you might want to explore. Uh, there's also the menus. Uh, as I just uh, demonstrated, you can poke through those menus to find interesting uh, features. Oh, and one last thing I should let you know about before I finish is the manual. And from uh, the, uh, the terminal or in our script file, if you go back up to that menu, um, oh, I was wrong. No, you have to be in a script file. Uh, so from a script file, from that menu, the ESS menu, I can go down to the read ESS info option there. And that Ooh, made a mess of my screen, but if I just turn that into one window, there we go. So now I've got the whole manual for ESS. Uh, and you can scroll through that. Um, I wouldn't worry about learning all of it. It's not like you need to study every every detail before you can make good use of ESS, but browsing through just to get a sense of what kind of additional features are available to you when you're ready to add them uh, might be a useful thing. So with that, thanks very much for your attention, and I hope that you enjoy the... the, the uh, the follow-up, the more advanced tutorials that are coming up next. Thank you very much.